Hoover. Rallies. They were, um, they were in rallies to get some burgers with their dad, and um, <laughs> right there in the lot, somebody hit them from behind. And uh, they pulled over, and then they were ex you know, talking about exchanging information, and they found out that the person who hit them didn't have insurance. Um, so they said, well, we still, you know, we need to report it to the police and so that we can do this with the insurance. And so they said, well, we'll pull over here out of the way. And <laughs> as soon as they pulled over, that car sped off. So, um, you know, just when you're going someplace, especially on your way to church or wherever it is, you never know what is going to happen. So we can't take anything for granted. We can't take for granted that the sun was going to shine. Look what, the, that the rain was coming down hard from where I was coming from. And I heard all over the city, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And we said we would go ahead no matter what. And look what God has done. Amen. So as the cars go back and forth, yes, honk. Let them know that we are still here. We are giving God the glory. Because he just has a way of, of working things out when you least suspect it. So I'm going to ask if you'll pray with me right now as we ask the Lord to cover our equipment, to cover our leaders, to, to cover all of the people that have gathered here. And I want to just take a moment and introduce um, some new people that we have today. You all know that um, Minister Jose, uh, his last Sunday was this past Sunday. And he does so much for so many people. There's so many... Um, Big, there's big shoes to fill. Um, so some things that, uh, just to let you know as a, um, information that we have, the, we do not have someone to translate the sermon today into Spanish um, over the headsets. But we do have, well, I just thought about Brother Jorge now that I think about it. We do have um, a, a manuscript, a Spanish manuscript of the sermon. And so we can hand those out to people in the cars um, if there's anybody we know for sure that is here and maybe going forward, we'll be able to take care of that with the headsets. Um, so we want to be sure to pass that out and we thank um, our worship leaders for being present today. Um, over here on the uh, keyboard is Brother Al Martino Dargan. Give him some love. He's a little nervous. He doesn't want you to know that, and I don't know why he is, because he's a very talented young man. His, his wife, Quantaria Dargan, is over there. Amen. So we thank them for stepping in and uh, being willing to lead. And um, I thank all of the uh, uh, existing ushers and those who are standing in as ushers and all of the worship leaders and the the parking lot attendants and, and Brother Joseph, who is working diligently to make sure that we have everything that we need. The tent that we had set up last week, it, it, it got knocked over in the storm, I think, on Friday. Man, they showed up and the tent was all bent up into pieces. And so Brother Joseph has provided these for our, for our um, leading right now. Amen. God always has a ram in the bush. Okay, it sounds like we are ready to go, so let us begin to worship. Thank and praise God for the things that he has done. From the Old Testament, Psalm 119, 105 through 112. Your word is a light for my feet, a lamp, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Now our call to worship. Now let us move into our worship of God using all of our hearts and souls, minds and strength, for we have gathered to hear about God's claim on our lives revealed through his word. Good morning. Ahora en lo que entramos en nuestro tiempo de oración, utilizando todo nuestro corazón y almas, nuestra mente y fuerza, por la afirmación de Dios en nuestras vidas, 
como se revela a través de su palabra. Sisters and brothers, God is always ready to help us, not only to be here to hear God's word and will, but also to empower us to act in a loving and just way toward others. We should therefore seek to find a way of sharing eternal life with others according to God's will. Let us pray that we grow in insight this day. Please pray with me as I pray for all of us. Hermanas y hermanos, Dios está siempre dispuesto a ayudar, no solo a estar aquí para escuchar la palabra de Dios y la voluntad, sino también para poder actuar de una manera amorosa y justa con los demás. Debemos, por lo tanto, tratar de encontrar una manera de compartir a la vida eterna con otros de acuerdo a la voluntad de Dios. Oremos para que crezcamos en conocimiento el día de hoy. Por favor, oren conmigo, ya que la oración por todos nosotros. And I pray, most creative and active God, we have come to this place this morning to sing, to pray, to give, to speak, and to hear your word spoken. We pray that you will help us to listen as well. We need to be more than seekers. We need to be doers of your will in our lives. To you, O oh God, we owe our very lives. Help us to look to all others and be neighbors with a zeal for their well-being as well as our own. Give us the type of God courage we need. This is my prayer for all of us. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Dios creativo y activo. Hemos llegado aquí esta mañana para cantar, orar, ofrendar, hablar y escuchar la predicación de tu palabra. Te pedimos que nos ayude a escuchar también. Debemos buscarte más. Debemos ser hacedores de tu voluntad en nuestras vidas. A ti, oh Dios, te debemos nuestras vidas. Ayúdanos a mirar al prójimo y luchar por su bienestar, así como los nuestros. Danos el tipo de valentía que necesitamos. Esta es mi oración por todos nosotros. Que do, todos digan amén. As we prepare to sing our opening hymn, keep in mind the word of 150 Psalm that says, All that have breath should praise the Lord. En lo que preparamos a cantar nuestro himno de apertura, Mantengamos en mente las palabras de Salmo 150, que dice, Todo lo que respire, alabe al Señor.
set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Amen. 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 Our New Testament gospel this morning is taken from Matthew 12, 1 through 8, and reads as follows. Now, at that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the heads of the grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for him or his companions to eat but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple broke the Sabbath and yet are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Hallelujah, and blessed be the word of God for the people of God. And let the people of God say amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm-hmm. I worship you.
In church today. I would have normally had my daughter here with me on my first Sunday. She was out of town, so I wanted to um, just bring her and and because she usually um, ministers to my heart and to the people around us. But um, I'm putting choir members on notice. Amen. Your turn. Your turn is coming. <laughs> don't don't think that you're getting the time off. We will be having a, a four four people praise team. Um, solos, duets, so we will be in touch with you because we want to be sure that everybody is using their gifts. Amen. We don't want anybody sitting. All right. Amen. So there is a word from the Lord for his people on today. And I would like to talk to you from the theme, when God does a new thing. When God does a new thing. Our message comes from the book of Isaiah where this great prophet brings words of encouragement and life to God's people. Hear now a word from the Lord. From Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 through 21. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians, in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they that lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Does anybody know that the Lord will take your enemies and he'll make them your footstools? Whoever's coming against you, God has a way of bringing them down so he can lift you up. He said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I have formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. This is the word of God for the people of God, and let the people say, thanks be to God. See, that's right. We want to give our thanks and praise right now, for we serve a right on time God, one that hears all of our prayers in every situation, the one that has words that speak to our circumstances, but not just words, words that are filled from power on, from on high. For whatever he says, you can bank on. Whatever he promises will come to pass. Whatever he predicts is as good as done. 
for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has been proclaimed among you, was not and is not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For in him every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through him that we say the amen to the glory of God. Say hallelujah and amen if you believe in God's word. Lord, as we come to this preaching moment, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts are acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and let the saints say amen. Amen. So in the book of Isaiah, the Israelites find themselves in a wilderness situation, a time of of lack, a, a time of struggle, a time of oppression and uncertainty. Is there anybody here who knows what it's like to be in a wilderness situation? Anybody ever needed something and you didn't have it? Went to write a check and all you had was paper and nothing to back it up. Amen. (laughs) Went to use that credit card and they told you it's just a piece of plastic. (laughs) Anybody knows what it's like to be in a wilderness situation. Well, just in case you might need them, there are some lessons that can be gleaned from this passage that help us not give up or give out in our wilderness circumstances. Because in our desert situations, we might want to give up, but we can, in fact, thrive where others might perish. Praise God for always making a way, because when anybody else is being knocked down, he has a way to keep you going on. Today is just week two for me here at College Hill Community Church. And I could not be happier or more excited about this new journey in ministry. Yet although I am a new pastor to College Hill, just as we talked about last week, I am not new, nor are any of you, amen, to all of the struggles and all of the challenges that have been going on in our families and in our communities, in our nation and in the world. For we are all aware of the racism and the sexism and the classism and all of the other isms that are allowed to be perpetuated throughout our society. Poverty and scarcity, inequity and inequality are unfortunately systems that were put in place centuries ago and yet still remain alive and well and active today. You know, we we, we often turn our attention to particular people or races that are uh, giving them too much credit for our circumstances, when in fact the real struggle is against systems that have been designed to oppress and suppress our voices and the light that is meant to shine from within us. There's a reason why we sing that hymn, I'm going to, you know, let my little light shine, right? But, but, but there's, there are systems against us that want to keep us from showing the love and power and goodness of God from inside. But see, we don't have to worry about people around us. It's these systems that are in place that we fight against. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 6:12, For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities. Come on now. President 45, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places, while people are profiting off of the, the, the backs of fo- poor folk, uh, as people are, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, some people are profiting off of the, the, the oppression and suppression of other people. <laughs> Is there anybody that realizes, come on now, that that simply by living, and especially if you're trying to live according to God's will, there are powers that are working against you in an effort to destroy you, to shut you up, and to make you give up? For simply by being born, that caused the enemy to turn his attention in your direction. You didn't do any de- anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything to earn it. Yet the enemy saw that you came into this earth and he tried to destroy you right when he got here. Because he starts out early trying to get to our babies and our young children before they can learn or believe anything about God or faith. He tries to keep them and their parents away from church so they'll be powerless at an earlier age and they will get under the influence under the, of the world instead of the influence of the Holy Spirit. And then many of our 
Our school-age children, they're struggling every day, some of them just to have enough food to eat while they're not in school. And then, uh, uh, or they're maybe trying to find some place to play safely without someone trying to sell them drugs or mistreat them or harm them. And then once school actually starts again, we'll be praying that, you know, for their safety as they return to a new normal with COVID safety practices being put in place and hoping that they don't get sick, simply trying to learn. And as if that's not enough, they will continually be reminded of impending danger by rehearsing lockdown drills to prepare them for the possibility of school shooters. There are systems in place working against our youth. But, but, but it's not just against our youth. The struggle is real everywhere. Tell somebody the struggle is real. The struggle is real. It's real. Think about it. As adults fight to keep their jobs and their health despite the pandemic, while others are searching for a job, any job, just to help make ends meet. As protests go on all over the nation, as another victim causes us to shout that black lives matter once again, as domestic violence and child abuse are on the rise, and drug abuse and drug addiction claims the lives, the lives of the lost and lonely, as we wonder when we'll be able to go back into our churches again, sometimes it feels like we're living in the wilderness. And if we're not careful, we could perish in these dangerous and traumatic conditions. But there is good news. Yes. The Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Creator, your King, has vowed to bring down all of these enemies and these threats that have been raised against you. See, somebody should have honked amen, right? Yes. See, I got to test to see if you're paying attention. For Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on now. We serve a God of overcoming, one who turns the tide of change in our favor. Jesus wasn't just crucified and resurrected so that we could go to heaven. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. We praise God for that. But he came to emancipate God's people. For as he proclaimed God's word in the temple for everyone to hear, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. See, some of y'all don't want to admit it. That's good news coming your way, right? There might be a check, a stimulus check. It might be a new job. Something's coming your way to make it so that you can make ends meet. He said to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives. Some of us are in our own private prisons. Some of us are in real prisons amen so but whether or not it's, it is by the bars and concrete or if it's something that we made up ourselves he came to release the captives and recovery of sight to the blind we don't always see things the way that we're supposed to we don't see the way God sees we need the scales to fall off of our eyes and so he came to let the blind see and he said to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor Jesus is a restore to those who have been suffering and oppressed. Yet you might be saying to yourself, well, preacher, where is my abundant life? Because I'm not feeling all that blessed. I'm still struggling despite my faith. Well, I'm, I'm trying to tell somebody today that abundant life is here for every one of us. We just need to receive it. Because if you've been paying attention, God is doing a new thing. The Lord says, do you not perceive it? Look around and you should see that God has been busy. Now, I have to admit, it may be confusing and hard to see because the terrain that surrounds us, the evidence says that things are not always on our side. Because if you look around your neighborhood, you might see some desert-like conditions. If you gauge things by the circumstances that surround you, you might find yourself in a hostile environment. If you try to find healthy food, clean water, a safe place to sleep, or financial security, there might be a famine going on. And if you view everything through natural eyes, it may look like we're stuck in a wilderness rather than living in the promised land. 
But the Lord says to his people, I am about to do a new thing, and I'm going to bless my people who are called by my name. But pay attention, because he did not say he was going to change our environment. He did not say he was going to take us out of the wilderness right away. But he did say, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in a wasteland. Now, this is important because the Lord talks about uh, the new things. When he talks about these new things, he says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Stop pining after what has already happened. So often when things change, we crave the past. You know how we do. We look back and we wish things were the way that they used to be, right? Oh, that's how we used to do it. My, my, my mother tells me that, you know, back in my date myself, but back in the day, you know, we didn't have to wear seat belts. And so when my children came along, I was like, you know, make sure you put your seat belts on them, right? And she said, I raised you without seat belts all this time, and you turned out all right. <laughs> okay, I lived, praise God, but let's, let's go ahead and put those seat belts on for the babies, amen? We can't always glamorize the past. You can, we have a habit of making things look good whether we enjoyed it back then or not, right? You know, we might have been complaining at the time, but now that it's gone, we want to go back. Because we feel more comfortable back there in the past than we do today. And certainly, the past often feels more reassuring than the future because the future holds uncertainty. But we serve a God who makes things brand new. He doesn't remake a lot of the same miracles. He does it differently each time. See, I heard uh, T.D. Jakes say once that his house had been uh, damaged in a, I think it was in a storm, and he was upset when it first happened. Amen, Sister Kath? That's what he said. But at least until he found out that the insurance company was going to pay for reconstructing it. You know, Dr. Williams, what I'm talking about, right? So he was happy once he found out, but then they said that they wanted to reconstruct his house just like it was before. And he said, <laughs> why would I want to put the house back the way that it was? He said, I already had that. If you're going to pay to rebuild it, I want something different than what I had before, right? He said, I, I don't want the same old thing as if nothing ever happened and, and nothing got done. Then we won't be able to celebrate what God has done. He said, I want something that looks like I picked it out for today. I want a brand new blessing that looks just right for this time. Does anybody want something brand new? Because, you know, it's easy. It is so easy to look back at an age or a situation and glamorize it, but if we're not careful, we will limit what God can do in our lives because all we want to do is repeat what we already had. It is, un it is important for us to understand that when we are looking for God to do something in our lives, we should not expect it to look like anything that we have ever seen before. Uh, take a good look at College Hill. Take a good look at the building. Take a good look at the people around you because maybe a year from now you might not recognize what God has done. If you want comfortable, safe, or unimpressive, don't call on God. When you're praying, you ought to expect that God is going to answer whatever you think of and conceive of pales in comparison to what God can do. For as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has imagined the things that God has in store for those who love him. I don't care how much you miss it or how much you liked it, but let go of yesterday. Stop pining away over past relationships and lost jobs and opportunities, regretting how things used to be, because looking to yesterday prevents us from seeing today and tomorrow. God is a right now God, and what he's doing right now in our lives is worth our attention and our gratitude. But maybe you're not feeling very grateful yet. Because you thought that things would be different than they are right now. You thought by now you would be more successful and more satisfied with your circumstances. You thought by this time you would be further along than you are today. Things have not happened quite the way that you planned. Anybody's life turned out a little different than they expected? <laughs> You thought you would be more financially secure, right? 
You hoped you would be married by this age. Or if you are married, you thought you would be happy in your marriage by now. Come on. You planned that you would have graduated by now. You expected that your children would be farther along doing things that you expected them to do. You thought you would be sitting back, relaxing, just enjoying your grandchildren rather than taking care of them like you're doing right now, right? You thought that you would be in better health or that you would be ready to retire and travel the world by now. You thought your church would have grown to a mega church by this time, that your city would be thriving by this point. Yet instead, maybe you find yourself in some situations that you didn't plan on and maybe that you don't necessarily care for. And you've been waiting and expecting the Lord to change your environment. But yet, here you are in the middle of a wilderness that doesn't seem to be going away. But here's the thing. The Lord does not have to change your circumstances in order to deliver you. Amen. So you didn't get that one. I'm going to tell him over here. Yes. The Lord does not have to change your circumstances in order to deliver you. I don't think you believe me. You know, taking you out of the situation is only one of the ways that God can bless you. For if you trust him, God can give you rivers in the middle of a desert. He doesn't have to move you to motivate you. He doesn't have to change your location to lift you up. He can bless you in the middle of the projects. He can prosper you in, in the midst of a recession. He can keep you safe through a pandemic. He can bring safety in the face of violence. He can make peace despite people declaring war. And he can bring love in the face of hate. He can create an oasis out of nowhere. And he can bring joy in your soul in the most unlikely of circumstances. This is important because... Nobody can know for sure how long it will take to get out of the wilderness, right? Yes. So we need to know to hunker down and bloom where we are planted because the Father will not let his children go without, even when resources are hard to find. Because there are some things that grow when nothing else does. Yet it, it, it's great to be a tree planted by the water, right? That's what the word says. But in a desert, you need to be like a cactus. Come on, you need to learn to thrive in the worst of conditions. To draw water from places that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Not everybody or everything can live in a desert. Only those who know where their source of nourishment comes from. When you start relying on Jesus rather than what society and circumstances give you, you realize that you have a lot more resources than you originally imagined. But you, you've got to think differently. You, you've got to act differently. You've got to walk differently in the desert because how you perform in the desert determines how long you can last in it. Let me make it plain. Now I'm going to step on some toes and don't be mad about this. This is the Holy Spirit, all right? So don't yell at me. Not having a strong prayer life might keep you when things are going well. You can get away with Jesus wept and a little bless the food, right, before you eat. That, 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 that all works when everything's going okay. But if you, want, if, if you don't want to die of thirst in the desert, you've got to be praying every day. As, as the children would say, every day, right? You've got to pray every day. Praying keeps your, keeps your mind right so you won't be hallucinating and falling out with every little thing that happens, right? Wringing your hands, worried about what you're going to do next. When you're praying, it gives you peace that passes all understanding. It'll give you calm in your spirit. You've got to pray in the middle of the wilderness. Now, you can also get by with, you know, not studying God's word that often when everything's going well, right? You can get your little word for the day on your phone app, and that's, that's all it'll take. But, but, but in the desert, you, you'll start to do things out of desperation if you're not steeped in that word. The word says uh, that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That, that there's a reason why you need to be steeped in those scriptures and memorize them because you've got to be able to call them up when you need them, right? Otherwise, you'll cuss out people in the middle of church, right? You'll tell people off at your job. You'll fight against your own family. In the desert, you cannot afford not to rely on God. 
When you're in the wilderness, you have to learn new ways of living. The things that worked for you before might not work for you now. You, you have to drink from the well of living water and eat the bread from heaven that is provided for you when you get it, or you won't make it for the long haul. In the desert, the vultures, they feed on people who cannot learn to survive on what is provided for them. Nobody wants to be food for the vultures, amen? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have to learn to adjust and adapt to our environments and to discover new ways of living and thriving, new ways to get nourishment, new ways of doing things, new ways to find joy and to appreciate what God provides because God does not always promise prosperity, right? He doesn't say we'll always be good times, but he promises always to be faithful. So even in the desert, God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. It is not up to us to tell God how to be God all by himself because he already knows what we need, right? But sometimes we have to go through some stuff. We have to learn some lessons in order to prepare ourselves for what God has in store. I don't know about you, but there's some stuff. <laughs> there's some stuff that he's given me now that I he, I, I he couldn't have trusted me with years ago. There's some things that I couldn't have handled back then. And so the wilderness, wilderness is not always a punishment. Punishment, but it can be a time of preparation because one of the things that grows in the desert is faith. Now, now, now faith flourishes while other, all other things die away in, other, in those conditions. And I, I'm going to tell you this story that I experienced it myself and then I'm going to take my seat. Years ago, when I was first called to ministry about 2005, the Lord told me that my father... Reverend Johnny Merritt was going to die. He didn't say when, and he didn't say how. Now, I thought this was particularly cruel, not just because I would be losing my dad and my rock and my source, but because I was just beginning to follow in my father's footsteps in ministry, and he was going to be taken from me. I expected that he was going to be my mentor. I expected that he was going to be walking alongside of me. I wanted my father to be proud of the minister that I was becoming, and I thought I needed him healthy to make that journey. And for several more years, he was there to support me as I went through seminary. But once I was ordained and really began to pastor, my father was ultimately diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. In my opinion, Alzheimer's is one of the most debilitating and cruel diseases that there is. It robs people of their memories and their minds right before your eyes. My father, who I had revered and looked to for knowledge and guidance all of my life, slowly became the shell of the person that he once was. He would have some good days, right? And, 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 and like nothing was wrong. And then he'd have those other days that I didn't recognize who had, he had become. And I would not wish it on my worst enemy. That was one of the worst wilderness journeys that I have ever experienced. Now, I've been in the wilderness a lot, amen? But this, this was the hardest yet. But then there's also some other things, some good things that happened on that journey that I, I wouldn't have gotten had I not been in the wilderness. When things got really crazy and I didn't know what to do, I learned how to pray unlike I had ever prayed before. Amen. See, pastors, you know, don't revere pastors too much because we can get just as worldly as anybody else. We can go weeks and look up, oh, I don't have to spend any time with the Lord. But when you go to, in the wilderness... It will put you on your knees. It will make you call on Jesus each and every day, several times a day. And I learned to appreciate the good days and the good moments and to cherish them because I didn't know when they would happen again. We need to hold on to the things that are going on in our lives, the people that are around us. Some people, you know, we want to pull our hair out because we've been in the house too long, but Praise God that you got family that might be around you or call to check on you and, you know, just reach out to the people that you love because you don't know how long they're going to be there. And I also learn not to sweat the small stuff. 
And in fact, in the scheme of things, a lot of stuff and most of the stuff is small stuff. It may be annoying. Come on now. It might be irritating. But, but, but it's not worth losing your peace of mind. And I found that peace wasn't something to wait for, but it's something that I had to claim. I had to hold on to my peace and I had to hold on to my joy and insist that neither the enemy nor my circumstances would steal those away from me. Sometimes we have to learn to fight for what we need and to insist on that abundant life that Jesus has promised us no matter what comes our way. Because what God has for you is for you. No one can take from you what God has given you. So I realized that I began to thrive in the wilderness as I accepted that God was with me no matter what was going on. Sure, I had bad days, but it's like the song says, I've had my good days, right? And I've had my hills to climb. I've had some weary days and, yes, some sleepless nights. But, oh, when I look around, when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. And I, I won't, I can't complain. Did I struggle in the wilderness? Absolutely. There were days when I didn't think I could make it. But each day that I did make it, I got a little stronger. And my faith got a little bigger. And I can tell you this, that through those six years that I had taken care of my father with the help of some of my family, I grew closer to him than I had been all of my life. I learned more about my father in those last years that I was with him that I had learned about him growing up. I was able to take care of him the way that he had always taken care of me. And that's, a, that's one of the most valuable things you can ever give your parent is to give them back what they have given to you. And that's something that I would not trade the world for. Because as we made that journey through the wilderness, God was doing a new thing in me and around me. Sometimes the things that make us struggle the most only make us stronger. Life will never look like it did before because he's not in it. But I'm okay with the new things that God is doing. For even in the wilderness, he is always with me. And if I just let him, and if you'll just let him, he'll show us new ways to journey with him if we just pay attention. Look around. See, God is doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Amen? Amen and amen. As the sun comes out on a day that started out so filled with rain, it's another reminder of what God does in our life. How many times have you felt like you were in your own storm? Sometimes with other people, sometimes just by yourself. And it seemed like the sun was never going to come out. And the next thing you know, the clouds parted and the sun showed itself. But the thing is, it was always there. Sometimes it was just blocked by things that were in front of it. So today, I encourage you in your wilderness, if that's where you are, or maybe you're in your land of plenty. You know, it's like they say, we're either always, we're, you know, always either going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. So maybe you can be the light for somebody who's going through, or maybe you need somebody to show you some light along the way. As we open the doors of the church, we don't want you to make this journey by yourself. You never want to be in the wilderness and not have a steady hand to hold on to. Now you can try to hold on to a friend. You can call mom or dad or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband or wife, but nobody can hold you like Jesus. That everlasting arm that won't let you go. 
We open the doors of the church that someone who does not yet know Jesus and has not professed him as Lord and Savior of their life, now is the time. The doors of the church are open. Is there one? Is there one? As we open the doors of the church, I, I've been told that there have been some confirmation classes that part of them have happened and some of them need to happen. We want to be sure that we are getting all of our youth baptized, all of our adults baptized and confirmation and being sure that everybody that we can touch is being told about the Jesus that we know. If there's anybody in need of prayer, you can receive your prayer right from your cars or you can come forward and someone will pray over you if you want to sit in the chairs. But I'm going to ask Dr. Peters if she would come forth now for our prayers of the people. Blessings, College Hill family and friends. What a mighty God we serve. If there are any prayers that you'd like to lift up this morning for individuals or things, please do so as we pray for the people. Yes, Lord. Oh, amen. Gracious God, we are so blessed that Jesus gave us so much grace and not judgment. Pastor has really given us a word to feed off today. For those of us who have lost our fathers, our mothers, and other loved ones, we know what that wilderness is like. And because we have gone through those things, Lord, we know where our strength lies because we have survived. So we come humbly before you and ask that you continue to strengthen us. Give us the hope and the desires that we need. Let us continue to edify ourselves and equip ourselves with scripture. Pastor shared that as well. Our parents and our ancestors have laid up, stored up many, many prayers for us. As we reach for those prayers, let's store up some for ourselves and for others. We can pray for everyone that is going through this COVID pandemic. And if we look at the scriptures, we can read all about it. So, Lord, just give us strength and insight that we can discern for ourselves. And when we don't know, we should be able to call on your Holy Spirit. Lord, just pray for all of us. Pray that we go home safely and that we stay healthy and sound. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. And the church said, Amen.
Thank you, Reverend Worthen. Thank you, Dr. Charles, Dr. Peters, everyone. Thank you so much. This service has touched me, and I know it's touched many of you. Amen. It's time for our offering. Cuando ofrendamos hoy, hay que recordar que lo que tenemos para dar es un regalo que viene de Dios, según tu voluntad, de todo que Dios creyó. Presentemos nuestras ofrendas y diezmos a Dios con esto en mente. When we give today, remember what we have to give is God's gift to us. It is given to us according to God's will that created us and all things. Let us present our tithes and offering to God with this in mind. for the doxology. Lord, we thank you for these gifts that have been given. We pray that they are used for the building of your kingdom that is shared with those who need it. We thank you for trusting us with your resources and bless the givers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You'd sing with me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here
offering prayer. Oh, Lord, receive our gifts. I pray that they will be used to give honor and glory to you and your kingdom that is here and is to come. Amen. Oh, Señor, recibe nuestra ofrenda. Oremos que será usado para darte honor y gloria y para establecer tu reino venidero. Amen. We are blessed to be a blessing. This quiet truth has the power to flip the world on its head. Jesus calls to us even now, asking that our lives turn toward love and compassion. Go and know that you carry the very power to bless all you encounter from Christ himself. Somos bendecidos de ser una bendición. Esta tranquila verdad tiene el poder de voltear el mundo sobre su cabeza. Jesús nos llama incluso ahora, pidiendo que nuestras vidas se vuelvan hacia el amor, la compasión, y ve y sé que tienes el mismo poder de bendecir, bendecir todo lo que encuentro de Cristo mismo. Now as we prepare to go from this place, but never from the presence of God, may the light that shines within you burn brighter each and every day. Bloom wherever you're planted. And when things get tough, be that tree that is planted by the water. But if you end up in the wilderness, put your roots down like a cactus. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. And let the church say amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen.